credit card debt, home loans, student loans, car loans? Seems like the majority of us have at least one of these. This improved second generation debt tracker automatically creates a versatile amortization schedule based on the loan inputs of our choice. The schedule shows the breakdown of the loan payments and includes a column to enter additional payments. It produces a summary table with payment information and the loan status section to see projections and the real-time loan progress based on the latest date. The automatic charts display the loan's lifespan and relationship between interest and principal payments. This is followed by a yearly summary that reveals the cumulative payments per year. It's quite useful to dissect and summarize a loan, but what about optimizing the payment of multiple loans? There's a payoff strategy tab that allows us to input up to 10 loans to find the right plan to get out of debt. We can choose different payoff strategies to effectively close our debts. As you can see, it's quite interesting to see how the total interest payments change based on the approach taken to manage the payments. The tracker lets us input a budgeted amount to pay and accumulate a snowball. Nope, this is not another one of my silly jokes. A snowball is a debt reduction method where debt is paid on a certain order under a specific budget. As loans are continuously paid off, the remaining budget money gains momentum to get rid of outstanding loan balances. This graph visualizes this strategy. We can see the strategy at a granular level in the payoff schedule. The monthly payments are assigned to different loans and as one gets paid off, the money is then added to the remaining payments until we're debt free. Credits to Vertex42 and Tiller for sharing many of the functions that inspired the creation of this tracker. Oh, and good news, the payoff strategy and payoff schedule tabs are available to access for free. Simply click the link shared in the description of this video and make a copy of the spreadsheet into your account. In the rest of this video, we'll learn how to build the initial loan tracker tab from scratch. If you would like to skip the tutorial and access the full version of this debt tracker in light, dark and cyberpunk theme, make sure to visit my Patreon, which is linked in the description of this video. Now, let's learn how to build the loan tracker feature from the beginning. The first time you open the free version, this is what you're gonna see. What you want to do is go to file and make a copy. Click OK. And now we have a copy of the free debt tracker in our account. So as you can see, if we go to the payoff strategy, we can now edit everything. So what we're gonna do is open up a new tab and we're gonna call it Loan Tracker. So the first thing that we need to do is create the Loan Inputs table. So I'm going to enter a few hypothetical inputs just to continue working with the rest of the formula so that we can see how the formulas capture the information. If you're ever gonna get a monthly term, what you need to do is enter the number of months and you divide it by 12. So say we want a six month term, so we would do equals six divided by 12. And we enter it like that. For the start date, we want the calendar. So I'm gonna go to data, data validation, and the criteria is going to be date. So now when we double click, we get a calendar. For the payment frequency, we want to get it from a drop-down menu, but first we need to enter the values. So we're going to enter them in this column. We go to data, data validation, and we're going to enter a range, which is going to be this one from L4 to L11. Click OK, save, and now we get a drop-down of all the frequency types that we can choose from. So I'm going to go with the standard monthly. For the compound period, we're just going to copy cell C8 and paste it here as well. And we're going to enter equals and then select the payment frequency. So whenever we change the payment frequency, the compound period follows the same pattern. For the payment type, we're going to enter two values. We're going to enter them through the list of items in data validation. And for rounding, we're going to do the same. But we're going to write on and off. Now we're going to enter a list of controls. With this formula, we're entering the number of periods that match the frequency. So as you can see, one will be annual, two will be semi-annual and so on. And we just copy this formula and enter it here as well. So we're going to be using these controls for all the rest of the formulas that we'll enter later. 
This formula will first select cell C8, then we add the AND symbol, and then in quotations we write payment. So whenever we change cell C8, this cell will change as well. We were using the payment function to find out what the payment is. However, we're going to get an error because we still need to fill up these two cells. So we'll come back to this soon. Okay, so we're done filling up the summary table. All these formulas are going to be available in the description, so you can copy and paste them in the cell where I'm pasting them. We're going to go to row 16, and we're going to start working on the amortization schedule. Okay, so this is the first formula that we're going to use in the amortization schedule. We use array formula with transpose and sequence. So it's grabbing the scheduled number of payments and then listing them like this. Currently, that should be 360. This is a very complex formula. But what we're doing here essentially is grabbing the start date and then adding the required number of dates depending on the type of frequency that we choose from the loan inputs. We're going to copy, go left. We're going to press Control or Command and then go down. And we're going to press Control Shift or Command Shift, go up. And then we're going to press Control or Command and then Enter. So that way we drag down the formula using the keyboard. Now we're going to select these values and move them to the right by one cell. I want to leave this one empty because eventually we're going to hide column D. First, I'm going to link the loan balance. So we have to link it to the loan amount. And now let's work on the monthly payments. So we're going to leave the additional payments column empty because we're going to use this one to input the manual additional payments as we go per period. And this is the formula that we're going to use from period 1 onwards for the loan balance column. We just paste in the rest of the columns. Okay, so that is the amortization schedule. Now we're going to work on the loan status table. Okay, so this is the skeleton of the loan status table. Before we start entering these formulas, I'm going to quickly finish up the yearly summary that goes on the right side. Essentially, we're summarizing the amortization schedule, but per year. So again, for the loan balance, we're going to link it to the loan amount. For the first period, we're going to enter this formula just to get the year based on the date that we entered. And then for the second one, we just want to get the year after. So we're going to copy this and drag it down. And there it is. That's a yearly summary. Okay, so the last thing that we're missing is the formulas for the loan status table and then the charts. Before I start with everything, I'm going to quickly format so that it looks a bit more digestible and easy to read. Okay, so I'm back. And as you can see, I just quickly added some colors and borders to each of the tables. I added some conditional formatting for this cell here. So if it's greater than zero, it turns green. I want to show you the conditional formatting that I added to the amortization schedule. So we got a format, conditional formatting. And as you can see, I entered a custom formula that says that if cell C20, which is this one, is less than today's date, then color it green. Therefore, it sort of shows us the progress of where we are with our loan. So at the moment, I'm recording this in November of 2021. And we started this loan in January of 2021. So from January until now, it's colored green. Next month, the row for December is going to be colored green as well. And to fill up the loan status table, it's very important that we create this conditional formatting in the amortization schedule because we're going to use that formatting specifically to count the number of periods paid. So what we're going to do now is enter a quick script that's going to help us count any colored cells. So we're going to go to extensions, app script, and I'm going to supply you in the description with a script that you simply have to copy and paste, save, and then run. Uh, it's this one here. And essentially what we're doing is just counting the colored cells that we specify. So if I go back, I'm going to enter this formula here, count colored cells from B19 to B. So B19, 
this one here all the way to the bottom and for refresh periods we're gonna enter a checkbox because this formula only works whenever you refresh the page so as you can see whenever we enter the count colored cells formula we get 11 and that is because it's counting the number of cells that are colored in this specific green color so that is 11 periods that are in green so 11 periods currently paid this cell here it's simply a true or false statement and we get it by entering a just a tick box so it serves us a refresh button for us to refresh the number of periods every time we make a change so for example say we get a new loan or we change a date or we just come back again in a month or two just make sure we just double click or click once the refresh number of periods now that we have the number of periods paid then we can continue working on the rest of the formulas And finally, for the progress, we're going to enter a spark line to get a nice progress bar of how we're doing with the loan. And that is pretty much it for the formulas. Everything's completed. All we're missing now is the charts. So we're going to work on the first chart. So we're going to go to insert chart. And we want a column chart. For the data range, we're going to choose from B4 to C4 and from I4 to K4. So we want the loan amount and the current loan balance. And now for the second chart, what we want to get is an area chart from C19 to E. And we're going to remove the numbers so it goes all the way to the bottom. And we're going to add another range. And this was going to be the loan balance. So for the x-axis, we want the date. And for the series, we want the loan balance. Finally, for the last chart, we want a line chart. So the data that we're going to choose is the interest and the principal. So C and H. And for the second one is the date. And for the x-axis, we want the date. And for the series, we want the interest and the principal. Okay, and there it is. All we need to do now is select column D and hide it, as well as column L. And the loan tracker tab is good to go. This is Planet Finance. Thanks for joining me. Until next time, happy learning.